This is a number two folding autographic brownie camera manufactured by the Eastman Kodak Company between 1917 and 1926. This particular model is probably from about 1920. Now if, like me, you spend hours upon hours trawling through eBay listings looking for good deals on old cameras, you've probably seen quite a few of these folding cameras knocking about. And if, like me, you both like to shoot film and like to have money, you've probably been tempted by their fairly low price. After all, these are medium format cameras which often go for under 20 quid. So could this be a true medium format budget beast of a camera? Well, no, but I thought I'd try it out anyway. Do you think? No. Think of a six foot tall man. <laughs> yeah, there's not that clear, right? I'll stand further away. Quick. Uh, waist level finders are fine, but this is this waist level finder is like a centimeter square in size. How do anyone how do people actually shoot these cameras like often? Shock to me. I'll take a picture of the graffiti, maybe. I maybe did, because I, I can't really tell what I am taking pictures of, but it might have been the graffiti. up maybe who knows actually oh I can actually see it I can actually see it because of the sun you ready I'm ready fuck it Tripods, eh? I feel like you should take a shot. I feel like you need to take a shot. You need to experience how much of a pain in the ass. Anyways, okay. Hands down, the best part. 
the medium format film photography, you get to lick the film. And Kodak's pretty tasty, pretty good, pretty healthy. Mmm. Mmm, yes. That's some good film. Now the most interesting thing about this camera is unfortunately also the only feature that I can't actually test. As I said before, this is specifically an autographic folding camera, which means it was intended to be used with autographic film. On the back of the camera you'll find this little fold-out window with an attached stylus. The idea for this is sort of an early version of a data pack, so you can make little field notes for yourself directly onto the film itself. Now unfortunately, Kodak stopped producing autographic film in the 1930s, so I very quickly gave up any hope of actually finding any in a shootable condition. So why would you want to shoot this camera in 2020? Well as I said, it's very cheap, it shoots 6x9 images, yeah, that's pretty much it. Much to my surprise, the camera did produce images that I would probably call approaching usable. The final images certainly have a very vintage feel to them, if by vintage you mean it looks like the negative has spent 70 years gathering dust in an attic. Weirdly, even though the camera is designed to be used with 120 film, and it even says so on the back of the camera, the images are actually too wide for modern roll film and you end up overlapping the film borders. So if you're one of those people that likes to flex on everyone and make sure that they know you shoot portrait, maybe this is the camera for you. Unless you really enjoy having a very inconvenient shooting experience or you have amazing eyesight, this camera is just very inconvenient and difficult to use. And given the look of the final images, it's really not worth it. It certainly is cool to be able to put modern film through a camera this old and get something approaching a usable image, but I think ultimately it's probably better suited to sitting on a shelf, giving you yet another excuse to lecture your friends about film photography. Assuming that you still have any. Here we are with Dan Bolly Jones YouTube. Hey guys, what is up? Once again, we're back again with another video. Don't you dare put that in the edit <laughs> of anything. What's going in? I didn't say it, so it's alright.